Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John. And this week we are actually revisiting one of the first topics that Six Pack Philosophy ever did. Uh, it was in our first season back in 2014. Uh, so four years ago at this point. Um, I actually wasn't able to find which episode it was. I feel like it was like five or six or something. Yeah, it, it was, was early. It was, yeah. it was early. very early. Um, we actually did it twice. What? Yeah, we did it once with oh. the unacceptable mic, and we had to re-record it once we got... We've got to get a picture of what that yeah. mic looked like. Oh, God. But anyway. Um. That, only one went out. That, 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 was, that was the only time in history that the unacceptable mic wasn't me. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. That is true. Uh, um, there but, can be more than one. But anyway, so we are revisiting civil asset forfeiture. Uh, there have been some developments since then that we're going to be addressing today. Um, but before we get into that, what are we drinking, you guys? We are drinking Maharaj Imperial IPA. From the Avery Brewing Company. Was this Boulder, Colorado? Bo uh, I've been trying yes, to Boulder, read it. Colorado. Yeah, Boulder, yes. Colorado. I can't read the, uh, the, yeah. the, the can very well. Yeah. Try this Maharaja IPA. Yeah, Maharaja oh. IPA. Um, Leviosa. You, you straight up a missed cool a can. letter. A whole letter. I thought it was silent. Wow. I, 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 I'm kind of excited I, about this, even though I'm not an IPA guy. Um, Avery uh, Avery makes some decent decent beers. Yeah, I like Avery. Um, all right. so That's a good color. Civil asset forfeiture. What? Um, let's just kind of kind of go around like we usually civil do. Civil asset forfeiture. And, and yeah, let, let's talk about what we think civil asset forfeiture is. <laughs> uh, John, what do you think? Theft. Theft, okay. Yes. Uh, Madam Mistress. Fancy words for theft. Fancy words for theft. Um, Fancy words for it, taking shit that uh, may or may not be actually needing to be taken. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and has become a, a really big problem. Uh, the definition I found for it was that it's a legal process in which law enforcement officers take assets from persons suspected of involvement with crime or illegal activity without necessarily charging the owners with wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. I, I do appreciate the definition. They didn't say it was a moral process. <laughs> yeah. They said it was a legal process. That's right. But I, I find it interesting that, that civil asset forfeiture is one of those weird places where you're kind of charging the property with the yeah. crime. Yeah, well, yeah. well, and when they take it to court, that is very much what happens yeah. is it is $3,698.42 versus the, the state, state of, of Kentucky. Iowa. Yeah. yeah. My favorite one was uh, was in Tenaha, Texas. It was uh, uh, the city of Tenaha versus one gold crucifix. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, 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 a you know. Why? <laughs> you know, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm. Well, I'm just saying the city of Tenaha is lucky that gold, gold crucifix didn't have its brothers. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. So uh, we we tend to think of this as a as a new thing, uh, you know, because it's something that that's, that's been in the news a lot in mm -hmm. the last few years. But civil asset forfeiture, or just uh, civil forfeiture, <coughs> has been around for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, in, in the form that, that, that we understand it out as today, it dates all the way back to the Navigation Acts in the 1600s in the British Empire. Yeah. And what had happened was England had, had passed a law that anybody that was importing or exporting any goods into the British Empire had to f fly the, the, the British flag. Um, and if you were, were caught with something coming in or out of the empire, anywhere, not just England itself, anywhere in the empire, without that, the crown could seize your ship and everything on it. When those acts initially passed, what side did you find yourself on? Wow, John. <laughs> oh, let me give you a salute. So uh, what I find... If you're not watching the videos, you're uh, really missing out. What I find interesting about this is that... Uh, you know, in the colonial period, one of the things that we were that we were uh, fighting against, one of the reasons why we revolted in this nation's history, is because the British were seizing goods through writs of assistance instead of through a, a court system. They theft without representation, right? Theft without representation. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, on, on a serious note, going back to the the 1600s thing. Um, so I know now that that the main 
citation for civil asset forfeitures to stop drugs. What was their like? What were they fighting pirates, a war yeah. on? It, well, it wasn't so <laughs> it's much a war on pirates. It wasn't so much a war. It was the fact that this was the golden age of mercantilism as an economic policy. And mercantilism is essentially the belief that uh, that all money should stay inside the empire. So they passed this Navigation Act with the idea that that England would would found colonies, and those colonies would trade exclusively with other English empires. So the money wouldn't go to Spain or France to fund their war machine. Right. So their that reasoning would be against. It, the the right. reasoning behind it was was if we're buying, it's like the Made in America principle. If you keep the money inside the empire, you're not fu- you're not funding your enemies. It's really odd how they thought that way because I've never heard that from President Trump. <laughs> I've also never heard of us funding our enemies ever. No. Yeah, but uh, but or their enemies. You know, they uh, there was a lot of stuff that was happening in this time period his- historically. Uh, there was something in the in the American system called admiralty courts, mm-hmm. where uh, if you were accused of smuggling, and this was considered smuggling, if you if you didn't have a, have that English English ship or English flag on your ship, that uh, you could be you could be accused of this crime, and it would go before an admiral, not before a jury. Right. And the admiral would determine whether or not you had uh, you had violated the Navigation Act, whether right. you were trading outside the empire. So kind of like what it looks like today, um, when when you don't have a jury trial. Yes, yeah, like like yeah, like like that. But in this case, it's not even a judge; it's a military admiral. And to make matters worse, here's the, here's the situation: was the king, the crown, got twenty percent of what was ever see whatever was seized. And the admiral only got paid. He got paid 20% only if he found you guilty. If he found you innocent, he didn't get paid for that that, that instance. So in like a modern equivalent, that would be like the DA being the judge. It's so weird. It's it's like a whole different system. <laughs> or, or, or or the police being the judge. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean... Kind of a disturbing idea. Yeah, so, it is. So we, we fought against this. And guys, the reason why... In our Constitution, it says there's a protection against unreasonable searches and seizures is because of the civil asset forfeiture policies of uh, of England. Yeah. I'm, I may be jumping ahead here. In fact, I am jumping ahead, but I, w- I want to mention really quick. Um, one of the things that really pissed me off, because my research mainly dealt with the differences in Eric Holder's policy on it and uh, more recently um, uh, uh, Jeff, Sessions. Jeff Sessions' policies on it. Um, and Jeff Sessions uh, recently released some new policies, and in that, he talks about giving extreme care with regard to uh, civil asset forfeitures um, pertaining to searches that are Fourth Amendment exceptions. Yeah, because because there there's there are. I don't exceptions. remember them yeah. writing exceptions into that. You, you missed that part. Yeah, it's unreasonable searches and seizures unless we want your shit. Oh. That, that's, that's, that's the part that they always forget. Yeah. That was the, the margarita machine club. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I mean, I, I look at this and I, I, I say our nation was founded on the principle that this is wrong, and yet we're, we're doing it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, for a lot of our history, we didn't. <clears throat> from, uh, you know, from the colonial period, when we put that unreasonable searches and seizure requirement in there, all the way up until 1920, civil asset forfeiture was used Almost none. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the court system almost always ruled that it was a violation. You could not do this. But from 1920 to 1933 was kind of the the first big heyday of of using using this as a as a weapon of law enforcement. And if you know your history, that's prohibition, right? Mm-hmm. So for for that 13 year period, the, uh, the the federal government uh, began use, began seizing assets of people accused of bootlegging. Uh, the, the, and and they were allowed to seize uh, property, uh, real estate property. They were allowed to seize vehicles. They were allowed to seize steels. They were allowed to seize anything, because the idea was if we took the money from these people, then they couldn't afford to operate, and and that was the that was the easiest, fastest way to end the corruption of prohibition. Um, and it was it was it was pretty effective actually. Yeah, and, and um, I, I think history has looked back and and decided who the corrupt actors in that whole thing were. Who was that again? 
Uh, it was definitely the bootleggers. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was. Like, it was well, definitely that's not why when they, alcohol is still illegal. Yeah, yeah, today. yeah. That, that, that's why it only la- that was a thirteen year experiment. You know, twenty to thirty three mm. is when that, that was going on. Here's the civil asset forfeiture, right? Yep. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, and after uh, after that that that, ni- that nineteen thirty three period, the court again came through and said, okay, we have to stop this. Uh, and and the court pretty much uh, routinely declared that, that this was a violation. You could not do this. Until in the late 70s, they started talking about it. But in 1980, uh, with the war on drugs, we're going to have, have have the first big modern movement towards this. Um, uh, I, it's, always, it's always cited as Reagan era because mm-hmm. most of it happened in the Reagan era, but it was actually pushed forward in the Carter administration. Mm-hmm. The Carter administration is the one that put it in place. The Reagan administration expanded it greatly. And the idea here was, if, if if you were around in 1980, the uh, the drug culture was was massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, cartel. This is this is the glory days of the cartel. They were they were growing uh, dramatically, uh, and America was was sick of it and was willing to do just about anything uh, to, to to try and stop this. And we're willing to look the other way on constitutional rights. So we go through here with the war on drugs, and we made civil asset forfeiture a a, a uh, uh, a hallmark of our of our policy. Now it was aimed at the cartel. The idea was was when you uh, you know when you when you believe somebody was smuggling drugs, you could you could uh, come in and, and seize their goods. And a lot of people cheered it because mm-hmm. um, they didn't think it would get abused. Uh, it, it almost immediately was. Um, by 1984, the federal government comes through, and they made the. This is probably the biggest change, and and, and the one that 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 was the most damaging to us. Uh, in the 1980s, you have people that are 80 to 84. You really have the federal government doing this exclusively, mm-hmm. and the federal government is it's mostly the DEA, and they're they're really focusing on on this one area. But the DEA comes through, and they said you, they determined in 84 that you could not just target. Uh, uh, the big guys, the cartel, mm-hmm. that the way to do this was to get local law enforcement in and to target even the casual drug users with mm-hmm. this. And they began a program called the Comprehensive Crime Control Act of 84, which permitted local and federal law enforcement agencies to divvy up the seized, the, the, the seized amounts. Uh, so suddenly the federal government says, if you'll do this, we'll only take, and I love this number, it sounds familiar, we'll take 20%. And we'll let the local law enforcement keep whatever else they they, they get there. Mm-hmm. Um, that twenty percent—that sounds like something we've heard before. I Isn't that like what England maybe, was taking? The Crown was yeah. taking twenty yeah. percent. They they picked that same number. Um, do you, do you they feel, looked back in history and said, "Hey, this worked well." Do you feel like it's a coincidence, or they were just looking through the books, like you know what? Fuck you. Twenty per. You, you know what I, I'm saying? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it was coincidence or not, but it's it, it's interesting to me I'm that they vote for no. that they did such. I, I don't think they went through and picked that 20% because it was in history. But I look at it and I go, they did so little research on this that they accidentally stumbled upon the same uh, the, the, the same number with this. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the way I see it. Uh, from 1985 to 1993, authorities confiscated about $3 billion's worth of cash. About $3 billion worth of cash, 85 to 93, uh, for, through, through this. And that's if you count civil asset for local and mm-hmm. And, and, and federal. I'm gonna, that's going I'm to gonna get a whole lot higher as we go later on. I'm going to put something on screen uh, in the video uh, about right now. Right um, here. Yeah. I don't know. It's not going there. It's probably oh, going over here somewhere. Down there. But uh, I, I, I want to I look in images real quick. I want to get a visual because honestly, yeah, that's crazy. <sighs> Most people, when you say a billion dollars, they think big number. Uh, yeah. Okay. So they seized three of those. Wow! And wow. cash. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that, that's amazing. And that's amazing. hundred dollar bills. And, Three and, four foot pallets of cash. And that's no, a, no, 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 no. That is. Or, or sorry. The that's one two three four eight five, ten pallets of cash. Ten four foot pallets of cash. And, and that's, that's for one billion. So three billion is thirty. Damn. And that's over eight years. Yeah. Eighty five to ninety three. That's what they did. I assume those are ones. Now those at, have to be ones. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. At at this point. At this point, we're looking at uh, at it's still mostly aiming aimed at at drugs, okay? Right. But then the first big municipal law comes through, 
uh, and uh, we have New York City comes through, and I, I don't have the year down here, but it was uh, it was in this same time period, eighty five to ninety three. New York City passed a forfeiture law that allowed them. They're to, always on the pioneering end, or the, 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 the they they they, they are. Piece. They passed a, a forfeiture law that allows them to use this against drunk driving. Uh, so. If you were caught drinking and driving in New York City, uh, well, uh, drunk driving, at this point, it's, it's not just you have alcohol. You've got to have failed a drunk test uh, or, or a, a, an alcohol test. Uh, but they're allowed to confiscate anything that was used in that material. So they can come and take your $50,000 car if they want to. Anything that was used in it, the act of driving drunk? Yes, yes. Uh, which, you know. If, Strip down. I take your wallet. Yeah. Uh, take it, your- it, it, it's, it, but. You know, if you're in your car, you got a fifty thousand dollar car. They I feel can like take you have your car to be, for that. To but, uh, be drunk well, yeah, yeah. But I'm, I mean, maybe it's not your car. Maybe you know. Yeah. Can they uh, seize the girl you were taking out? Take her home for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, you just gave Jeff Sessions a new idea. That's oh, that's God. not good. That's not good. Um, so you've increased the amount of human trafficking being done by Jeff Jeff Sessions, John. By the way. Uh, I'm going to throw this out here now because she mentioned human trafficking. If you, I'm going to go ahead and give our podcast cast recommendation right now because it fits here. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I have to do this. <laughs> You've got to listen to Behind the Bastards when you get a chance. They have a, a an episode out right now on Steven Seagal, and it's called like Steven Seagal is much worse than you want to than you want to believe. And uh, Seagal is actually currently under investigation for human trafficking. Uh, so and that's that's that came out like two days ago. I'm just trying to figure out if I would rather be behind those bastards or in <laughs> front of them. It's a great podcast. If you haven't listened to that one, that's that's a good one. Behind Not the now. bastards. Don't listen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, file that away in your mind. File that done away. With this, check it out. So uh, there it, will be it, a link it keeps getting more and more expanded, and there's been a lot of tests against this with the court system. Um, in, in 1993, the Supreme Court case, Austin versus the United States, ruled, and this is an interesting ruling, they said that for, for, civil asset forfeiture can be considered an excessive fine, but they upheld the principle of civil asset forfeiture generally. So what they're saying is, in this case, that it is okay for the police to seize goods as long as it's not excessive. Mm. Excessive. Like $3 billion. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I don't. It's one of those. They took those words. They took three billion dollars, but they took it from a billion people. Is it like, like a speedy work. trial? <laughs> when you get a speedy trial, yeah, speedy yeah. trial, yeah. yeah. Um, or excessive uh, bail. Excessive yes. bail. Yeah. But the idea here is the court is trying to deal with this. They're 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 working with it. But but let's be honest. They that they, they are tr- and I think that's probably the the best word you could have used. They are trying to deal with it. They are not trying. To fight it, they're not trying to do away with it. They're trying to deal with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it, it, in some cases, and there's a lot of cases. Uh, uh, we'll talk a little later about Tinnahaw, mm-hmm. Texas. Uh, I, I, I think we will anyway. Yeah. And uh, there's there's a lot. There's a New Yorker article about it four or five years ago that uh, that that basically proved that that they had a judge in their back pocket for uh, for the civil asset forfeiture in Tinnahaw, Texas. No, they have is, a fucking president in their back pocket well, now. Well, well, Tinaha is to me the the probably the you know it's this little bitty town on the border almost in, yeah. in Louisiana here in Texas, that's that's just world famous They've, for the the, yeah. the the civil asset forfeiture. And and for anyone who's not familiar with with the the laws and geography in this area, the reason that that Louisiana border is significant is gambling is illegal in Texas. Yeah. And in Louisiana, Shreveport is a huge uh, casino hub. And that's, and a, that's right the route. Time. That's the route between Houston and Shreveport. Yeah. And the justification Tenaha gives over and over again is that they, they pull people over, particularly people with uh, uh, with rental cars they are famous for, because they say that this is a, a, a major thoroughfare. And if you're going through it, you 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 must be you must be carrying drugs. Yeah. You must so be people a drug going back and forth to the casino, yeah, um, are carrying large amounts of cash. Yeah, probably for lucky drugs. lucky them. Probably right? probably for drugs. Uh, they're either taking it to lose it or they want it. And yeah. Uh, yeah. either way, either way, Tenaha is. At one point, they uh, at one point Tenaha, Texas was funding their their police department at forty yeah. percent by uh, and they've always been a speed trap. Yeah, they're yeah. they've 
their police department has been stepping on toes and throats for a long time. Yeah, I, I go out of my way not to go through Tennessee. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. just saying, if you make it all the way to Shreveport and somehow beat the odds and actually make a good amount of money, it is not expected that you, have to, <laughs> that you have to go through a sec- second gamble of will I lose the police lottery. Yeah. Playing roulette is a better bet than driving through Tennessee with any money on you. Yeah, yeah. Um, interestingly, so in 1993, we've, we've said the Supreme Court ruled that it could be an excessive, uh, excessive fine. And I think they're right there. It's fine. But I think they're right that it can be an excessive fine. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't Mm -hmm. think they went far enough, but that's at least a step in the right direction. Now that same court with, I'm thinking 93 to 96, with no changes on the court, there would have been no changes from 93 to 96. Um, the Supreme Court ruled that seizing property via civil civil asset forfeiture does not constitute double jeopardy because one is a criminal case and one is a civil case. Right. And, you know, yeah. I, I'm which being, has been applied in yeah, a, other places yeah, as well. But it's the same crime. And, and, and I have I have a real issue with that. Well, I you really know, do. Because I don't have a problem with it if it's two individuals that are doing it, but it's the state doing it both times. And that's more problem I have with it. Yeah, I, I actually can can defend this a little bit. I completely disagree with civil asset forfeiture existing because, you know, you say it's a civil case. Uh, I don't have a problem with a civil case being brought against an individual mm-hmm. and that, that whole thing going through and whether it's against state or the state against an individual. But this whole idea of against pro- – I don't think civil asset forfeiture should exist. But if somehow I could get my mind around to the idea where we're suing microphones and, and telephones or whatever and, and, and we live in that world – I do actually see the justification for a civil versus criminal trial. I get that, but it it, it I, needs to be a real trial, not a horse and pony show. I, I, I think I think it needs to be. I, I think you need to be tried once for a crime. Now, again, if if the federal government, if I wreck my car and the federal government brings charges against me for drinking and driving, uh, you know, I'm, I'm drunk. I wreck my car. That's fine. And then if the person I hit brings a civil uh, uh, case against me, that's fine. That's two different instances. But if the, if the state does it both times for the same crime, to me it's double jeopardy. L- l- let me ask you this then. Let me ask you this. Serious question. Yeah. You're driving, you've been drinking, and you crash into the police station. Okay? Yeah. They try and take you for drinking and driving, and they lose because you tested out at a .07. Not 0.08, 0.07. And they say, okay, we still think you were inebriated. You still destroyed the police station. We're going to bring a civil case on you. You won't have a criminal charge, but you've got to pay for this still. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I think you've been found found innocent at, at, at this point. So I, I, I think I'd have an issue with it. Okay. I think I'd have an issue. I understand there's a difference there. Uh, and maybe I would be okay if it was, uh, if, you know, if they were leasing the property and the property owners did it. it you know, th- yeah. that might be something different. Yeah, I just think that, that you've got a situation where you're giving the state two chances to get you, and that's not right. Well, I, I disagree with you at this point because um, while they found you innocent of drunk driving, um, the charge of drunk driving did not also find you innocent of property damage. Okay, I, I, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Um, but you can't but, – but, but, I don't think that's the same thing as I'm charging your property with a crime because I well, think that's I agree that, with you there. That's actually yeah. a huge part of the yeah. problem that I have with this is um, one of the things with civil asset forfeiture is that um, now there are cases in which a person is charged with a crime and and convicted of that crime and their assets are then seized. But the that's one, called criminal forfeiture. Right. And I have no problem with right. criminal forfeiture. Um, but I, I want to clarify yeah. this. Um but what we're talking about here is when the owner of the property is not charged with a crime, but their assets are seized. And when that yeah. happens, it is then property, uh, non-sentient, inanimate, I guess some of it could be animate, uh, property that is being seized and then named as a defendant yeah. in a case with charges put against it with the uh with the onus being on the defense the property of proving its own innocence property which cannot by its nature be innocent or guilty um and, and that's my 
that is my issue with civil asset. Or, well, not all of them. That is one of my significant issues with civil asset forfeiture and why it seems so absolutely ridiculous to me. Well, here, here's, here's my biggest issue with it, okay? My biggest if, I- issue is that the, the standard of proof is, is so mm-hmm. much different. Mm-hmm. In a criminal case, the law says that, that, that you have to be found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And you're it, presumed innocent until you're proven You're presumed guilty. innocent until guilty. Now, it doesn't say that you have to be, uh, be, be proven guilty uh, beyond any doubt. It says beyond a reasonable doubt. And I think that's, re- that, 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 that's okay. But in a civil case, the, 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 the determination is a preponderance of evidence in most states. Mm-hmm. Some states, it's even less than that. Yeah. But in 40-plus states, I don't remember exactly the exact number, more than 40 states, it's a preponderance of evidence. So if there is a— Is that currently? Yeah, yeah. I looked it up yesterday. Um, I've also seen that 20 states have— Anyway, go uh, ahead. Uh, but a, yeah. Well, yesterday when I looked it up, it said over 40 states is preponderance of evidence. Okay. Uh, if, if something's else— I got that off the wiki, so you know you look at that stuff, and, and sometimes that's not always accurate. So, well, we also uh, have to look at the sharing program and were they including those yeah. states? That anyway, go yeah. ahead. But a preponderance of evidence just means it basically is there fifty percent plus one. Okay, mm-hmm. that is not a re- necessarily beyond a reasonable doubt. Okay, yeah. uh, and 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 we've got lots of cases where where a, a police officer and you can go on YouTube and watch videos of this, and I got into YouTube hell watching mm-hmm. over and over. Uh, of of uh, dash cam videos of police officers and videos for inside cars of police officers seizing seizing money and saying uh, I, I believe this is for drugs. Yeah. No drug. No dogs jumping. No mm-hmm. no drugs found. I just believe that you are using. And it in this. some cases where they brought out the dog and the dog didn't hit. Yeah. 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 Um, did not hit, and I still believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just, I have a belief. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is enough for civil asset forfeiture. I, I, I mean, that that is, is you know, to the, the point of, of the, you know, let's look at the Salem witch trials where they had a religious belief that this this was 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 going on. I mean, it, but yeah, it, it's crazy. Yeah. It really is. Um, I want to uh, kind of, kind of, Move just a little bit through here, but let's talk about this beer before we before we get there. Okay, uh, we is are, this a good stopping point? I, I, I think we're okay. Okay, we are drinking the Maharaja IPA here from Avery Brewing Company and uh, Boulder, Colorado. I got to tell you, this is an awesome can. I it really is. like it. I really, really do. This guy uh, traveled with a bunch of money, and if he was doing it in the U.S., uh, he probably would have. Yeah, he'd, he'd have been seized because he, he also had an army, so he's probably cool. But, uh, do you think his have, army could have beat our, our say, have, army? Though have, have you seen have you seen the uh, the, the the cops lately? Um, by the way, back you said. <laughs> oh army. God, that's yeah, another thing. Back back to this. I've got to tell you. Uh, back to Tenaha, Texas. I saw an, a, a, a uh, article talking about how they they hired two uh, two police officers just for uh, seizing money. Just and sure. all they do is watch this. these two cops. Their sole purpose is this, and unlike all the other cops, they dress them in camis tucked into jump boots so they looked like they were uh uh military guys uh and and that was that was their sole purpose i look at this and i'm thinking this camis camouflage uniforms like oh. like like the military uniform i'm an old moraine camis you um, are today that means a spaghetti strap tank top does it really like it, a camisole yeah wow that's, that's especially that's in the camis- marines that's, that's especially that, what that, i mean that's that's what i was talking about we, we wore camisoles tucked into our, our jump boots that visual but was the best think of these you know, military style uniforms, uh, and and these guys were carrying uh, carrying rifles, not pistols. Of course. And they're, you know, I'm looking at this going, th- th- this is a jackbooted thug here. It's disturbing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's disturbing. All right, who wants to start this discussion of the Maharaja IPA? I- I'm willing to start. Now, actually, okay. on this one, I want to hear you go last. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm willing to. Okay, um, so I- I'm really enjoying this. This this is this has been an interesting experience. This is not your typical IPA. Uh, it's definitely got the hop characteristics in it, but it's a lot smoother than than so many uh, IPAs are. Uh, it also has a good deal of sediment. In fact, uh, uh, we had our. Do we have a title for Cosmo now? I don't. We have yes. our person uh, taking our marketing director. Yes. Marketing director. We had our <laughs> marketing director. Promo- uh, promotional Greek princess. This show yes, is pro- gr- promotional Greek princess. Shut the fuck up, Mike. The show is growing. Yes. Uh, uh, she she doing photos of our beer and Instagram stuff, and uh, we actually stopped. Uh, if you're watching YouTube, you might have seen me like signaling everything. Just getting a picture of the color of this it's beer. It's beautiful beer. And the sediment in there. 
I, I mean, it, it's got a really uh, stunning visual appearance. Um, the flavor is smooth. It is. It is not going to be that smack you in the face with a bag of hops. Uh, uh, a flavor that was so popular there for a while with the IPAs. Um, I like it, but it's it's a little bit off character of what I'm used to when I drink yeah. an IPA. So I'm having trouble rating it against those. So I think I'm just going to kind of rate it on what it is. I think it's, I think it's a 3.5. Really? A 3.5? Hmm. Okay, I'm, this is going to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised. I, I, I'm I'm really surprised. Okay, okay, go ahead, Anna. So as I was looking around the can, trying to find the IBUs on this, um, I actually found something hilarious on the bottom of the can. Is it the turban? No. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So it has, like, when it was canned, uh, which at this point was four months I ago. can't read any of this. No, you can't. But at the very bottom, it says, goodbye, A.A. Ron, you will be missed. I don't know if they all say that. I, was, I would assume so. But yeah. Yeah, mine says that, that too. was hilarious. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so... Anybody who knows Key and Peele yeah. should be everybody. That or maybe they had an employee that had left and they kind of did a tribute. I don't know. Well, yeah. I, a. What a. I expect was yeah. his name was Aaron and they yeah. called him that because duh. Yeah. Of course you did. Um, but anyway, back to the beer. Um, the hops to me are a little too aggressive. I, I think that the beer is. Are you stoned? <laughs> don't answer that. Go ahead. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Too aggressive. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think the hops are too aggressive. It lands like right on the middle, middle of your tongue and it kind of sits there and it, it stays there for a while. Um, otherwise, I, I think it's the beer itself is good. It's got a good mouthfeel. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and other than that one factor, I think it is good. Um, but that has been enough that I have not I've not even gotten through half of this beer um, and and I'm not thoroughly enjoying it the way that I had hoped that I would so with that um, I'm going to give it a 2.8 I okay. think it's a well made okay. beer and I think that a lot of people will like it but um, that's interesting that that spike of hops is is too much for me okay I am I am I am shocked on both of these. I, I really expected uh, th- this is going to be one of those controversial beers. I think that's going to be really weird because I expected. And Mike's going to give it a point six. No, no, I thought y'all were going to four point six. I thought y'all were going to rank this really, really high. I was expecting it to be much higher from both of you. Um, I love this, but beer. I'm stoned apparently. Well, because wait, I, what? I, I, I yeah. love this. Beer. Wait a minute, what? I love this beer. I'm shocked by by by, by what y'all are doing. I think this beer is when I pointed incredible. out this beer, John. When I pointed out this beer, I said, "What about Maharaja IPA?" What I, did you say? I said, "Yeah, yeah. we can do it." Mike's gonna bitch. Well, I hate IPAs usually. I despise them. <laughs> you keep saying that, and you keep rating them well. No, I, I have not. I don't have I rated an IPA well. Like the last is, three. Well, I. I don't ha- I don't taste the bitterness in here that I have on so many mm-hmm. of them. The hop flavor is it is good. The curve is there. It's easy to drink. I, this, this may be my new beer that I drink. I really like this beer. I, I I'm enjoying this more than I have a beer in a long long time. I'm going super high. I'm going four eight. Wait nice. a minute. What? I love this Are beer. you stoned? No, I love this beer. I love it. I now love the beer just because it's flipped the whole dynamic I have, of the show. I have no idea what's wrong with y'all. This beer is 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 almost perfect in every way to me. And I don't understand because I, I I'm not I, I don't usually like there's no bitterness to it. It's <laughs> you, there is no bitterness in this beer. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't. It's open your mouth. I taste open your no mouth. bitterness. Open your mouth. No. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy. I can show you where it is. Drink the beer and then open your mouth. I can show you where it is. So for anyone who's just listening, Anna's trying to stick things in Mike's mouth. Just to. Uh, oh, God, just to it's a glorious day. This is a great beer. I really I thought y'all. Were, I thought y'all were I both going to be high broken. fours. I really did. I, I, I am shocked. I gotta record oh, this before I black it out. I love it. I love this beer. I, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. I've got to tell I'm you, I'm calling your wife. I was and ready to bitch. Asking her to take you to a psychologist. I was ready to bitch Ow. whenever you brought an IPA up here. I did not want this beer today, and it's fucking, You're fucking awesome. Welcome. 
It's fucking awesome. I love you guys for this. I'm sorry y'all aren't enjoying it as much as I am. I'm, I'm enjoying I give it a 3.5. That's he not a bad rating. Three, 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 three five is a good rating. I just I, I really thought y'all were going to be 4.3, 4.4. Four. I, I was expecting it to I'm, be really high. I'm really fuck date lawnmower. I don't, I really, I don't know, I, what's, it won't, it, I don't know what's wrong here. I'm not going to bang you if you bring me this beer, but Mike apparently will just drop trowel right there for you. Absolutely. Here's the deal, though. I, I, I think I'm thinking about this, and... I, I know y'all like the real hoppy IPAs a little more than I do. This doesn't have that hoppiness to it's, it. It's a lot smoother. It, it really is. is. It, it is so smooth. There, there's there's a little bit back there, but it's the the flavor profile, the curve is just so good in there. Yeah. Um, well, and, and that's really where I had trouble. It, it's a good beer. I don't I don't want to take away from the flavor. I'm not going to say it's one of my favorite beers. I think I think you like it more than I do. Yeah. Yeah. But. It's hard for me to rate against other IPAs. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and, and I, I intentionally did not rate yeah. it against another IPA because I don't I don't usually like a lot of others. Yeah. It doesn't have that strong uh, I always call it a pine needle taste that so mm-hmm. many IPAs have. I just don't I don't I don't like that. I'm not getting that at all yeah. out of this beer. At all. <laughs> all right, so Anna says it will not get you laid. Mike disagrees. Uh, on a date beer. Uh, this this Never. is Wait, Sorry, it's not, not that my category. Bad. It's yeah, not that's true. that bad. That, that is true. It's not uh, that bad. It did get a 2.8. It, yeah. it, it's it's the only date. reasonable rating on this show. <laughs> it's every date for me. So on Reasonable da- 2.8? No way. On a date beer, you know, th- I, I think I'm going to have to like open up a new category for this thing uh, oh, just man. because of how controversial it has been. This is a gamble beer. I think it is, yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and I think it, th- this can, can really win you some points, as we've seen. Yeah. And it can hit you pretty hard. So, I mean... Uh, you, you may not you may not want to bet the barn on it, but you, you may you may find some good wins on it. Happy birthday, Mike! You can have my beer. Bless you. But so I'm, I'm gonna call it a gamble beer. Uh, not a lawnmower beer to me. It's it, it it's uh, it's a little uh, little it's strong. Under the lawnmower beer. It's a little strong for a lawnmower beer. <laughs> but um, you just become uh, polarized on this whole thing. <laughs> however, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna kind of go through go through all of these. Yes, this beer will get you laid. <laughs> it's an any date beer. Um, and, um, you know, it, if you're drinking this, you don't want to have a lawnmower. You want to be dating the girl that, you, that you're taking out with this. So, no, yeah, not a lawnmower. Don't waste it on lawnmowers. Don't waste it on a lawnmower. Um, I, I just I think it's an outstanding beer. Awesome. Um, awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with this, and I'm going – did you get this fresh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have to go buy me, like, a million cases of this. Okay. You're not going to see this can. Um this was actually one of two six packs left. They have a much more plain can. It's like white and green. Well, that's going to disappoint me because I, I really know. like this. Can. You're going to open it up. Can. You're going to go get a six pack of the different cans, and <laughs> and you're going to open up and you're going to call. Uh, you're going to like shoot up the group. Me- you're going to shoot up the group message. I feel like with my rating, that's what's going to happen. No, you're going to like hit us up on the group text I had this and image, be like, image I tried like, it in like the other with a spoon. Yeah, yeah, you right. know. So, no, you don't want to go ahead. Sorry, you're gonna like hit up the group text and be like, I tried it in the different can. This beer sucks. Point six. <laughs> so, you want to know what it got on Beer Advocate? Uh, 4.8, I, I guess. 4.23. Yeah, yeah, okay. We discussed, I, I believe it was last week, how yeah. fucked up the ratings give, are on Beer Advocate. I give Advocate. no credit, credit to Beer Advocate for that stuff. No. I, I, I uh, however, in this case, I think they're closer than, than Anna is. Um, of course, you do. Anna, you're just a dumbass when it comes you're to writing. You're a dumbass. I, I swear, you. I'm going to kick you out of this chair. Like that'd be the first time you kicked me. Okay. She just kicked me under the table. It's <laughs> an <laughs> under table deal going on. You didn't say ow, did you? Uh, no, I, I, I was busy trying to read where we are. All right. So he we, didn't say ow. He used to be a marine. Thank you. Used to, I'm going to slap the <laughs> shit out of you. I am a marine. All right. So we've dealt with the Supreme Court in 93. <laughs> okay. Anna's saying we got to talk about it. No, right. no, 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 I'm no, not. no, 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 no. Our audience no, is saying, curious. No, I'm saying let's go. We've our been audience, on this like rabbit trail forever. Our audience is curious, and 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 okay, I was I was busted by my my. Um, <laughs> oh you my god, that. you deserve that. I go was ahead. busted by my uh, my co-host here on something that I said on what episode was the, it? The Puerto Rico statehood. Puerto Rico statehood. That apparently I said what? I used to be a marine. Oh my or, when no, I when, when I was a marine. When I was a marine. That's what yeah. it was. When I was. I am a marine. still a marine. Damn it! I'm just non-practicing. Uh, he was a marine then too. Yeah, yeah. And he's still. But I, I've got to tell you, if you'd have called me out on that during the, I'd, I'd have been shut down for the whole the whole time. Yeah. Uh, it's not good. You were leading that one. I really don't believe I said that. I think you're wrong. You need a clip? Uh, I'll listen when it comes out. Okay. All right. So we've dealt with the 93 and the 96 Supreme Court decision. But in 1999, the Supreme Court came through and said, uh, 
uh, that civil forfeiture was not permitted if the amount seized was, and this is the quote, greatly disproportionate to the crime, uh, or greatly disproportionate to the gravity of the offense. So what does that mean to you? Well, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually glad you corrected yourself because when you first said great disproportionate to the crime, I said, I was going to say, what crime? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I had but, to, I, I corrected. Yeah, you yeah. are correct. Yeah. To, and the quote was greatly disproportionate to the gravity of the offense. Uh, so they're saying that 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 if the uh, um, if what they're taking is is uh, I don't know, I don't know how to even put this now, John. Uh, if if it's ridiculous for the crime or, or for the uh, assumed the crime. assumed crime the the, tra- the, the the transaction I don't know yeah. what it is that that is illegal. If the act for which you are suspected that there is not enough evidence to charge you, um, for which there is not enough evidence to charge you, is awful enough. Yeah. There. So it, it looks uh, like it looks like the court is moving in the right direction. Yeah, but I slowly. mean, what, what I really read when I think about this statement and its application to our legal system is what it says is if the cops get out of line because we think they're out of line, we'll bring them back. I mean, that's that's what I read yeah, here. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What it sounds like is if they seize the assets of someone we like, then we'll rein them in a little bit. Uh, I. I I don't get that from it, but I, I, see, I'm cynical, I, see, I see where you're coming from. I, I really think the court is – what we have to remember, remember about the court is that, that they, they're, they're not lawmakers. Right. Their, their, their purpose is to respond to specific uh, uh, cases that are brought before them. And I don't know what case this was. Mm-hmm. Well, and sometimes a case is brought before them, and, and the response – to that case is 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 one thing, I, so so without knowing what that case was, I, I don't I don't really understand. I don't yeah. I don't know how to respond to this. Yeah. But but here's the deal. I, I mean, here's where I think they've really slacked off, and we could have a whole show on this, uh, on the history of the courts and and how things have changed. But their job is to interpret the law. Interpret the law. Yeah. And and they're broadly refusing to to actually interpret the law. I think they and, are interpreting it. I think I. I, I I don't know that they're interpreting it correctly, but they are interpreting. Well, I mean, it. I've seen so in in modern in modern SCOTUS rulings where they've said this was wrong, but we're not going to tell you when in the future it would be wrong. We're just going to look at it case by case, and that's but, not an interpretation of the law. That that is a instance of of saying we. No, like that, the- that's how the court works. I, I think I think that is what the court's supposed to do. I don't think that the court is not supposed to tell the legislature what to do. The court is supposed to say. What you did was wrong. Now fix it. If they're telling the legislature what to do, it's a violation of separation of power. So, it, so it, it, it's not what their job is. So no, I, I'm not talking about telling the, the legislature how to write the law. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about when you get a case brought up that has to do with – there was a recent one on, on IP with printer cartridges. Yeah. Not, not going into the details. And they came through, they came through and said that uh, this – specific instance did not apply to this but we're not going to tell you what this means so broadly businesses can say when it does and doesn't we're not going to say what this law does mean but we know it doesn't apply to this one that is my problem i think that's an issue uh i i think they need to define what something means i i I agree with you there uh but but you know i think there's a there's a slippery slope there that you can run into where if you take that too far, you have the court telling the legislature what they have to do. Well, and if, if the, the beautiful thing I think about it is if the court comes through and says, we read this, we deliberated on it, we had our lawyers look at it, and it means this, and the legislature says, that's not what we meant it to mean, the legislature can they then can quickly it. fix it. Yeah, and w- which is, well, which is the way it. it's They're supposed to They're not going to do anything quickly. They're, they have before. Look, that, look at I, the Patriot I'm making Act. a joke. Yeah, yeah, I'm making yeah, a joke. Yeah. I mean, well, in times of extreme emergency, they act quick. Um, all right, so but let's talk about, about about a couple of more decisions because I keep saying I think the court is moving in the right direction, mm-hmm. and they, they seem to be moving there. They're moving very slowly. And part of that is just just the the nature of the a nat- gigantic the government. The nature of the system. But in 2000, lawmakers passed the Civil Asset Forfeiture Reform Act, which uh, w- which put protections uh, for people that said that proof is required before um, 
there has to be some level of proof required before they can, that they can take your evidence. The problem is they didn't define what proof is. Does that only apply to federal civil asset forfeiture? That does only apply to okay. federal mm-hmm. at, at this point. The federal government, and again, I, you know, that's a federal system. I in agree. federalism, I there, there's there's yeah. state and there's national, and we have to fight this on both battles, yeah. on b- both battlegrounds. At and least, right now they're partnering up, which is making it fucking uh, difficult. You know, the Obama administration made some made some some moves to to, to, to try and separate that a little bit. The Trump yeah. administration has 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 undid a lot of that. Yeah. Do um, we do we want to go into that or is I, I don't think so just okay. yet. I want to I want to talk about a couple of more of these decisions. Um, well, you jumped us there. I want to talk a little bit about uh, something that the court said that, that I find interesting. The court made a ruling, again, in 2000, that uh, that if the claimant wins in a civil forfeiture case, that the le- – now, this is, this is their word. This is a quote. Some of the legal fees paid to recover the property or partially payable by the government can be uh, – uh, Yes. Uh, can be recovered. Mm-hmm. They specifically said some of the legal fees. What, what 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 do you think about that? The the fact that the, the court is saying saying look, if you have to pay a lawyer, some of your fees have to be have to be paid by the government. Why aren't they saying all of your fees have to be paid by the government? Mm-hmm. Well, I I think if if you were to ask them, and this goes again back to making ambiguous rulings on purpose, all is some. Yeah. It's a well, really yeah. big sum, but I, I think I, I think they wanted to leave it open to discretion. Well, you know, we have we have this weird situation right now with civil forfeiture, where uh, you know everything seems to be right and left, mm-hmm. Republican and Democrat. This is not. No, you have this weird, weird situation where the ACLU, which is the fighting arm of the liberal wing of the of Congress, and the Republican Party, uh, Tea Party particularly, yeah, not have, all of the Republican Party, but, but, but by the any Tea means. Party in particular, and 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 libertarians have united to fight against civil asset forfeiture. It's 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 been a massive movement here. But you also have this really interesting situation where both in the executive, uh, uh, for sure in the executive and legislative and probably in the judicial branch, you are seeing people have what Hillary Clinton described as a public and private view on the issue based on how they're talking in the public and how they're voting on the bills. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I, I've lost my spot for a minute. So we talked about this being partially payable by the government. Uh the, the ACLU argued, uh, and, and interestingly enough, again, the ACLU, with the back, backing of a large amount of libertarians and a large amount of, of Tea Party Republicans, have yeah. bought this case up here, where they argued that this is a the civil asset forfeiture is a violation of, of, of our civil rights because in a civil asset forfeiture case, the poor are not entitled to a free lawyer. Yeah. In a civil case, you're not in that, that whole whole idea of if you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed. For, that's only that's in criminal, criminal cases. Sh- that's only for criminal cases. So their argument is that that the law the the lawyer fees would so eat up the amount of money that you could get back that in most cases it is cheaper for the poor to just accept the the, the forfeiture. Yeah, something than it like eighty percent of forfeiture cases don't get contested because they can't fucking afford it. They, they well, can't and, afford and the it. interesting thing <laughs> is that exact statistic that four out of five cases they walk away from the property is used as justification for why it's a good good program because yeah, they since did. they didn't fight it. They, they clearly must, have been, must have been guilty. Yeah, never mind the, f- never mind the other interpretation of this. That rather than targeting the giant cartels that they're claiming to be fighting, um, they are actually targeting the poor and disenfranchised, knowing good yep. and damn well that they can take sixty bucks, two hundred bucks. They can take the twenty four hundred dollars that they were going to use to buy a new car, or one gold crucifix, or, or one gold fucking cruci- one fucking necklace. Yeah. Now I, I will say on the federal level this. This isn't the states, but on the federal level, they actually do have a minimum amount to which they they, they um, uh, limit this. Uh, I think it's five thousand. It's five thousand dollars unless they're given special permission. Uh, ten and anything under ten thousand dollars, they have to give like a little bit more evidence, uh, or get special permission yep. from from the attorney general. So 
Mm-hmm. On the federal yeah. level, we're not seeing these little things, but, but we s- are seeing those on the state level. Oh, and, oh, and, yes. and, and the local. And the yeah. local. When you have yeah. little places that are getting 40% of their law enforcement revenue from civil assets. Yeah, asset well, and that's the other thing. That's one of the things that pisses me off so bad about this is you're seeing chiefs of police, you're seeing um, local representatives who are arguing that civil asset forfeiture is a good idea because, well, if we raise taxes to provide the police departments with the things that the police departments say that they need, you know, that's going to make law abiding people unhappy. So we can just take it from people driving down the road who haven't been charged with a crime on some hawk ass uh, fucking suspicion of bullshit. There was a, uh, uh, I, I watched a video in Kentucky. Uh, I've forgotten what interstate it was, but uh, there's northbound and southbound in, in there. And, you know, and, and the, it, it's, a, it, it's believed to be a major drug highway. And they generally believe that the northbound is where the drugs are coming from Mexico and the southbound is where money is going back. And 80 percent, 80 percent of the, 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 the people pulled over have been pulled over on the southbound side of this interstate yeah. in Kentucky. Because they don't actually because give a shit about the drugs. That's where the money is. If you were if you were really trying to do drug interdiction, wouldn't you be on the northbound side? You know, it, you look at this and you and, and, and you wonder about it. Money is the main cause of the opioid crisis, don't you know? Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, interesting. I want to talk about pharmaceutical money. By I the want way. to talk about what I what I like to refer to as the biggest son of a bitch on the planet. Trump. Here, no, no, no. He, oh, sorry, Jeff Sessions. No, worse than both of those guys. A guy named Joe David. Ever heard of him? Mm-mm. Uh Joe David to me is the biggest son of a bitch in this whole thing. Joe David is a former cop who founded a. Uh, uh, a private company called Desert Snow. Uh, Desert Snow trains police officers in how to identify civil uh, or identify people for civil asset forfeiture. Oh, I have seen this. Um, he is under contract, and I've forgotten uh, how many, but hundreds. <coughs> excuse me, of police departments. He is the sin- Desert Snow is the single biggest company training police officers in how to identify this. Um, and, and he has trained police officers. He's a consulting firm on, on how to identify somebody for, uh, for uh, civil asset forfeiture and how to find the money with them. And if you look at his, uh, at, at his training, it's largely if you find money, take it. Yeah. But here's and the how deal. how to legally get away with it. How to it. legally get away with yeah. it. Here's the deal. Desert Snow, because they're contract with these people, they get 25% of whatever is taken mm-hmm. during the contract period. 25% of whatever mm-hmm. they take, they, they, they take. this guy and this guy's company gets. And he, this is a son of a bitch. You yeah. want to hear something worse? Yeah. So as part of the, the whole Eric Holder rollbacks by Jeff Sessions, one of the requirements to participate in the federal program is that you give annual training to your department. And Desert I wonder Snow's- who pushed that through. Is, is the single the single biggest trainer of this stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, th- there's more than one, but this is the big one. This is the big one. Uh, yeah. What a son of a bitch! Uh, mm-hmm. There's a special place in hell for Joe David. All right, I've kind of gotten through my history of this. I kind of want to turn it over to, to to you and let you talk a little bit about uh, you know the, the Eric Holder and Jeff Sessions. Yeah, so I, I want to kind of set the tone a little bit because when we first uh, talked about this. Nearly four years ago, it's like three and eight, nine months, something like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, it was it was really big in the news. It was kind of the height of this whole thing, and um, it, people were pushing back. This is when ACLU got really up in arms. There were a few key cases, uh, stuff where you saw uh, police departments buying margarita machines, people's house getting seized over their son having forty dollars in heroin. Um, one woman saying he was distributing it. Yeah, one woman who got a, a, a large amount of cash seized because she operated a little like ma and pa kitchen, like like restaurant, yeah, yeah. and worked only in cash, didn't have cards, and was making cash deposits. And they said she was trying to evade. She was laundering money. Yeah. Uh, so so on and on, and 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 so these cases start coming up, and this thing really starts getting attention. Uh, the Obama administration, uh, while they they didn't seem there were some movements, but largely didn't seem to want to end it. 
they did realize that there was at the very least a PR crisis and maybe a moral one. You know, it's hard to say why maybe. they they made their decisions. You know, but I, I don't agree with everything that Obama did, but mm-hmm. Eric Holder seemed to do a pretty good job. He did. He did. And so what Eric Holder went through and did, he ended the federal sharing program except for cases where the feds were actually involved in the case. Amen. He largely reduced the usage of civil asset forfeiture to cases where they were monitoring bank activity and had this this preponderance of data for large transactions going through. Uh, Still a bad thing. It's still a bad thing, but I kind of like it because it's looking at a history of data, not I pulled you over once and saw you had money. and, And while I don't agree with it, I can at least respect... The method there is a better. burden of proof. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they also uh, uh, put limits on on the amount that could be seized. Um, th- they largely went through and and cleaned up a bunch of this. They didn't remove it, but they cleaned up a bunch of this and largely focusing on the loopholes that were being used by state and local officials to get around state and local laws mm-hmm. yeah. pertaining to this. Yeah, in the handful uh, of states where civil asset forfeiture is either outright uh, not legal or yeah. greatly was restricted. limited. Yeah. Since you brought that up, let me talk about New Mexico just a bit. Yeah, go ahead. New Mexico passed the most comprehensive reform, state reform of civil asset forfeiture of any of the states. Good. Weren't they like of one of the ago. worst for a while? They were. And, 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 and New Mexico was actually the poorest state. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they, uh, they passed massive legislation requiring that... Uh, the, Basically, they made it almost impossible to do it, mm-hmm. okay? Yeah. Now, you can't stop the federal government from doing their thing. Right. But at the state and local, they made it almost impossible to do this. Uh, it, it was bipartisan. It was members of, of, of both the Republican and Democrat party. In fact, it was it was chaired by a Republican and a Democrat, you know, the chair and co-chair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, here's the deal. I just got through watching something about this. Their problem is— the the cities are ignoring it. Of course they are, and uh, uh, they're they're still doing it. And the and and the state courts in in New Mexico are refusing to enforce the law because of the federal uh, a program that says uh, 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 sharing with this. And they're saying that even though the state has made it illegal, that the federal law trumps the state law, and they're operating under the federal legislation. Yeah. So, so I wanted to at least throw that out there. Yeah. So that's what Eric Holder did. Uh, skip forward to 2016. Um, Trump gets elected. And early in 2017, he starts this big kind of, uh, I'm going to call it a parade, in which he is going to end the cartels and the evil Mexicans coming in the border and human trafficking and all the, the things that hurt the children, right? And he has these, these very public... Uh, uh, meetings with with very popular law enforcement officials from across the nation uh, in which the media is invited and they all sit down and have these round tables and he pledges that he says you know what do you guys need mm-hmm. and the biggest topic talked about by these police departments is that they want back civil asset forfeiture yeah yeah and so he uh, directs. Now it's not really clear where this started, whether it was started by Sessions or started by Trump. But we know that after these meetings go through, Sessions comes through, and he enacts some uh, uh, new policies. Because this was all, all done at the executive level; it wasn't done at the con- at the legislative level. He enacts some new policies, and it's really funny because if you watch the press conference and actually read the policies, they are worded in such a way to make it seem like a restriction yeah, they are. on civil asset forfeiture. Yeah. These restrictions are, 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 are very much lip service restrictions. I, I'm going to go through the, the three main points I took away after actually reading the three-page policy that was put out. First of all, they require a new form to be filled out on any civil asset forfeiture uh, using the federal program. Yep. And this, this form, uh, I haven't seen the form, but supposedly it requires them to document more evidence so that the attorney general will then know whether this is a legitimate civil asset forfeiture case. Uh, they require expedited handling. So they require that within 15 days of the actual seizure, that the feds be notified with this form. And within 45 days of the actual seizure, 
that the parties whose assets were seized be sent paperwork on their property that was seized. Uh, this is touted as an expedited process because it is done twice as quickly. No, go ahead. So what it sounds like is that the feds want to make sure they they were having trouble getting their 20% in a timely manner. So they want to make sure they actually get their 20% in a reasonable amount of time. Now. I, I, don't, I don't know that that, that actually had anything to do with it. That, I'm that, feeling really cynical today. Yeah, I, 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 I really today. Don't. Yeah, I, I she just agree shot with that. the damn bird at um, me again. But, but, but yeah, I don't know that that. I'm not the, sleeping with you anymore. Good. The timeliness of the anyway. delivery of their money was really at all an issue here. I think it was an easy way for them to say we're cracking down on civil asset mm-hmm. forfeiture without doing much. But something I do want to point out with that, they're saying this is twice as fast. So without the 45 days, it was 90 days. Imagine. Your kid has forty dollars worth of heroin. Your house gets seized because of this. Yeah, and you Which are means you get kicked the fuck out. You are there's, homeless. There's a lot of cases of this. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Philadelphia, it was in the thousands of houses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you are homeless for ninety days before you even receive paperwork that allows you to initiate the ju- the process of fighting for your stuff back, which is a lengthy process in yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. How many of you could be homeless for ninety days while you waited on paperwork to be delivered to? Yeah, I don't know where, where the it fuck gets are they going to send it. Actually, will, will you let me live with you? Yeah, she, absolutely. If then, I, then I could do it. <laughs> yeah. Just don't bring drugs. Then they'll seize my house too, and we'll all be. It'll be a whole like yeah. spiral. Of they'll seize the microphones. Does, does you Benadryl know. count? Are you abusing Who knows it anymore? <laughs> if it's Sudafed, you might. You I mean, might get it didn't have because in Texas don't you, bring you can't that buy Sudafed anymore. <laughs> it doesn't have to be an actual crime. So who knows? It could be aspirin, right? Um and the other thing they did is, and this is this is one where they like, we're going to do two goods and a bad, right? So they lowered the seizure amount. So you can actually seize, uh, and I talked about what those amounts were earlier, but you can actually seize at a lower threshold than yeah. you could before. And you look at this and you're like, well, it was kind of a trade-off because we got two good things and one bad thing. But then there's a paragraph at the, the very bottom. the bad was really bad. There's a paragraph at the very bottom, and all it does is it says this latest policy supersedes any pre-existing policies. It's all like lawyerese, but they go through and list, and, and it's not even listed. It's like listed with a title and a page number. It overrules this and this and this and this, and then when you go look at what those are, that's all the restrictions that were put on it in the first place. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's like we're doing... Two goods and a bad, and all the good that was done before, fuck it. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. 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 So, go ahead. You've been waiting. Finish. So, so basically, that they came through and, and had this really cool press conference where they talked about trying to restrict the bads of this um, while the whole time, very underhandedly, uh, undoing all the progress that was made. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, it's, it, it's rough. It really is. Yeah. Well, and, and you mentioned those press conferences earlier and there the meetings with local law enforcement officials. And one of the things that really stuck with me, in fact, I uh, whenever Mike and Cosmo got here this morning, um, I like busted out of the front door. I said, fuck it. I thought I was going to enjoy researching this show, but now I'm just pissed off again. And that happened ever since. But uh, what Not the, you. Shut the fuck up. That explains your beer writing. You were mad when you started. I was hoping the beer would cheer me up. But um, one of the things that really hit home with me was at one of those meetings um, with some Texas uh, officials. Trump was talking to them, and one of them made a complaint that this senator had, um, had filed a bill, and this was in 2017. The senator had filed a bill uh, to restrict civil asset forfeiture. And... Uh, he said, you know, we, we've got to fix this. We've got to whatever. And Trump said, what's their name? We'll ruin their career and their life. I saw that. Like straight is just going to completely destroy somebody because they're that trying was here to in go. Texas. That was here in Texas. Yeah. Uh, Democratic senator. I don't remember her name. It was a woman. Whatever. I think um, it was the same. What, what's her name that ran Connie? for governor? Uh, no, the, ran for governor last time. Um, no, it wasn't Davis. It wasn't Davis. Last. It, <laughs> no, she's never been a senator. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Just, thank God. Thank God. Inside joke. But keep calling her a Democrat. <laughs> but anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, it was a Democratic senator. And, <laughs> and he's just like, what's her name? We'll destroy her career and her yeah. life. And it's mm. like, wow. He really is a son of a bitch, isn't he? <laughs> like, 
they're trying to go through the proper channels. There's there's a thing that this person has established as as something that they disagree with, said, I think this should change and I'm in a position to change it, but they deserve for their life to be destroyed. I got to tell you, I, I was a lifelong Republican until Donald Trump ran for the president. I, I'm, I'm going to go on my soap, soapbox again here. That son of a bitch is is the most evil man there ever was. I just can't stand that son of a bitch. I'm sorry. I just you, 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 I, I get mad anytime we talk about him. I know. I know. Um, bigger son of a bitch than uh, um, D- Joe David from Desert Snow. You know, I, I don't They're know. They're blood brothers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, AIDS <laughs> blood brothers. Do you want private sector ego evil or public sector evil? You know, and and the fact that Jeff Sessions seems to be like funneling business to oh, him. Yeah, you yeah know? A- absolutely. And that that well, and it's like Jeff Sessions problem. is stuck in the seventies. It's like he hasn't recognized any of the changes in in. Here's here's the deal though. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to give Jeff Sessions a little credit. Why? I, I, I don't like. He is senile after I, no, all. In he the can't legislature. help himself. I don't like it's Jeff Sessions here. in a lot of ways, but in the legislature, he voted very well. Mm-hmm. Fine. Uh, and I think, I think Jeff Sessions is voting, or, or, or is doing everything that he's doing from a place of principle. I think those are his principles, and he's been con- he's just consistent daft. in it. I, I think Trump is doing everything from. Uh, uh, from, from just political expediency, and that's a different thing. Yeah. Well, well and, and I don't like Jeff Sessions, but I do think he's a man of principle. And one thing that Jeff Sessions brought up in these press conferences now, now, granted, here's a problem I have with this whole thing is because they had to word the press conferences that they were further restricting it when in fact it was clearly the opposite, lets me know that they're not proud of what they're doing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But all that said, one of the things that he touted was the restrictions he put in place from Congress yeah. when he was in there. On to the last at forfeiture, which he did. Yeah, he did. He, he did. did that. He did. Uh, another piece of this that that you know was kind of overlooked. It's is, easier to make restrictions when you're on the outside. Yeah, yeah. You you mentioned this being a bi- well, and when the people on the other side of the aisle are in charge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you you mentioned this being a bipartisan issue where Republicans and and many Republicans and almost all Democrats agree. Um, and libertarian. Let, and let, let, let's give them credit too. Absolutely. Um, but there was actually a bill to try to roll back Jeff Sessions' changes from the legislature back to Eric Holder's policy that failed. So while we say it's a bipartisan issue, there's clearly something there where they they're well, not they're not following through on what they're saying they want to do. I'd like to right. see what the vote was with that because <laughs> uh, you know the Senate is fifty one forty nine right now. It, it would have to for a few more days to, to stop that. It would have to have taken some Democrats crossing over. Yeah. So, I mean, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah. I, I do. It gets so, back. To, I haven't looked at the numbers, but yeah, but but but, yeah. but you know, it, it it's very very narrow, and and you know, some Democrats had to cross over because you know that, that that you've got those those guys like you know Ron Paul have, or, or Rand Paul where he's going to be with that right. one. So you, you you wonder about that. Hey, I'll, Cruz, I think would Cruz, yeah, yeah uh, Cruz probably. I don't. I have to look at it and make sure, but uh, he's a. Uh, uh, while, while there's a lot of things I like about Cruz, he does get a little polit- political expediency every now and then. Uh, I don't think he bleeds red. I think it's green and gooey. Uh, you really people? don't like him? I, I, there's a lot I like. There's a lot I like. There about are Ted things Cruz. Of, I, I'm a lot not I don't speaking like. about him personally. Yeah. He seems slimy to me. Yeah, I, he's like, got, I think he's, he's filled with slime. He's got that used car salesman feel. <laughs> yeah, about, he, does. he does. I want. They're all filled with slime too. I, that, that having been said, I think ninety percent of congressmen have that used car car salesman yeah. G. Oh, uh, I bet it smells like slime in there. Oh, I, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm hey, done. Hey, let's let's stab them all and see. Uh, I'm gonna get arrested He's now. Gonna, okay. there's, I hear the bomb falling Don't right do now. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. I want to. I want to hear drones. I want to look at the other side of this. If if you hear it, they've already hit you. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. They travel faster than sound. So, uh, I want to talk. T- to be fair, I want to look at the other side of this, too, and justification for it, because there are those people that, that, that do justify this, mm-hmm. that look at this and they go, yes, yes, there are some civil liberties it's situ- situations, but there are reasons for this. They so, call them Leos. I, 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 I still think we need to look at it. Okay. I think we need to honestly look at mm-hmm. it. Uh, the fact that it, it is a deterrence to crime. But what, what do you think about that? This uh, th- there are really three big ideas. The first big idea is that yeah. it does deter crime. That's not possible because it's not a criminal thing. Yeah, it would have to be criminals to deter the crime. Okay, but 
If you, well, what they're saying is take, that they're seizing the assets that would the be used for criminal they, behavior. Yeah, if you take the money away before they commit the crime, are you are you deterring crime? You know, I will, I will, I will agree with him on that because since they didn't charge them criminally, they weren't criminals. So if they had to charge them criminally, there would be more criminals. Well, and here's the deal. I, I, if I think nobody, there's a logic here. If if nobody has the means to commit crimes, crime doesn't happen. So you legalize everything. Smaller crimes happen. <laughs> there you go. There you go. It deters crime. No, I'm just saying, like, make everybody I mean, quadriplegics, I, and then crime doesn't happen. Take all their shit and make everybody you quadriplegics. on the sidewalk. Cut out their tongue. Speaking of, of uh, drool on the sidewalk. Uh, never mind. I, I won't go there. But 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 no. I'm yeah. not, no to, to your I point, figured it out. I, I see what you're saying, and I, I I I could see in an ideal world if you like, you know, had the future crime prevention unit, and you went through. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I, I'm know? with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. But I, I at least wanted to address this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Second one. Uh, and, and, and I think this is the one that's harder to harder to disprove. Now, whether you agree with it or not is mm-hmm. different. But this is a quote: "It enhances cooperation among foreign, federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies." Oh yeah, of course it does. <laughs> hey guys, if you do this thing that is illegal where you're at, but you can go through no, our, no, route, no, our route to do it. It's not illegal if the legislature says it's legal. No, and I'm saying like agrees. at the local level, it's it's not legal for them to do, not, but they can do it through the federal level. Not if the court has ruled that it's okay. It's legal. Excuse my crass. Maybe immoral. Excuse my crassness, uh, but, but on yes, this, it is on this issue, I uh, I really don't care about yeah, it. Who okay. the fuck gives a shit if they're okay. cooperating? The gangs like to fight in the streets when it comes to the gangbang they all get in line wow wow i know i always get in line for the gangbang okay uh and the third are you one, wearing red or blue <laughs> i'm wearing leather red right that, now <laughs> right. Uh, the third Different one gang. Uh, the third one is that it, it it prevent or it presents revenue for law enforcement that is that a is, fact it is okay. absolutely that is a factual. fact okay so the three it's are nauseating the three are punishment deterrence uh-huh and I'm going to say yes, it does to a little, to an extent, to a little bit. And we have a no from John, and we had a. Yeah, I think it does. You're taking things that all right, so theoretically could be. So uh, two yeses and a no here. I, I mean, I agree with the statement the same way I agree. If we just locked everybody up in prison today, so they couldn't commit crime. Yeah, it would be a well, and that's what I was deterrent. saying. Like, well, if you, know, you that, take that, everything away from people that right. they can commit crimes with, then yeah, you're oh, look, deterring I, crime. I am trying here, damn it. I'm well, trying. That is the only excuse that is not completely <laughs> devoid of devoid right, so, of any morality. So, so the first, the first one is three out of three. Yes, <laughs> yes, okay. they're, they're right here. Second one. Is it enhances cooperation among law enforcement. Three out of three. Three yep. out of three. No condom and, needed. And the third one, revenue for law enforcement. Yes, that is true. So three out of three on all three of them. I think we're, they, we are now civil asset forfeiture proponents, right? No. They are, all, <laughs> no. they are all technically correct, and that's the best uh, kind of correct. That's the best kind of correct. Oh, it's Lord. also the kind of correct that like gets you shoved out of a moving vehicle at 80 miles an hour. All right, guys, so that would be a crime, and that would be civil guys, asset forfeiture. We're, we're almost <laughs> out of time. We are, we, are, we are out of time. I have been for we a little We are way while. out of time. But I want to I want to give some specific mm. examples before we leave, okay? Lightning uh, just, round, thirty light, seconds. Light, no, no, not thirty <laughs> seconds. A minute and thirty seconds. I want to talk about okay, about some specific examples here, so you can see exactly what this is. Because some people are listening to this and they're yeah. going, they're punishing criminals. This is great. Javier Gonzalez was carrying ten thousand dollars cash in a briefcase and got pulled over in Texas. By the way, Tenaha, Texas. Um, deputies handed handed Gonzalez a waiver and said, "This is a quote." Uh, from from Gonzalez, uh, if he signed over the money and did not claim it later, he would not be arrested. But if he refused to sign the waiver, Gonzalez will be arrested for money laundering. Let me do a roundtable. What do you think? What do you think about the I, about, about the law enforcement? I do, I do want to give a little bit of visuals to anybody listening and watching. If you you think about ten thousand dollars in a briefcase, I think a lot of people think like you open a briefcase and there's money in there. That is a single wrap stack of hundreds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a single stack of uh, so go get a stack of ones. Imagine they're hundreds. That's what he had in the briefcase. Yeah. Please go ahead. So what do you think about this? They okay. Look, he's got ten thousand bucks in the in, in a briefcase. Could be a legitimate thing. Could be going to buy something. Could be drugs. We don't know. But the fact that the police department says. That if you sign this document and don't try and claim your money, we will not charge you. If you don't si- sign it, you'll be arrested for money laundering. What do you think? Yeah, it tells I mean, me that they don't believe he was actually doing anything wrong, or they're corrupt cops. 
Why didn't are they willing just, to be... Who, why if, didn't they just charge okay, him? If they believe that he was money laundering, what they literally did was take a $10,000 bribe to not charge him. Yeah. Because if they charge him, they don't get to just turn around and spend the money they want. Yeah. They actually have to go through a process. It gets, it gets held up. They have to spend money. It doesn't. It's not profitable for them to do that. Yeah, yeah. So All right. Angry. Let's talk about Matt Lee of Claire, Michigan. Matt Lee uh, was, was moving from Michigan to California. Which is illegal. <laughs> moving from Matt, from Michigan to California. And according to Matt Lee, now I'm, I'm going to give you his, that he was given $2,500 cash from his father to help him get started when he moved. Also illegal. Um, so Matt Lee is moving. He is pulled over in Nevada. Uh, they they pull him over. F- I, I, I don't remember the exact reason, but I think it was an expired, uh, it was an expired sticker of some sort. I don't remember if it's inspection or license. He was pulled over for an ins- ins- expired sticker. Um, and the money was taken away from him. By the time he hired an attorney, the attorney took half of what he got. He won the case, and he ended up with one thousand one hundred thirty dollars of his money left. He yeah, won the case and, in and, Nevada, and, a state where ten times that goes on a roll of dice. Yep, yeah. for twenty five hundred dollars. That wasn't a down payment on my house. Yeah, yeah. All right. May 2010, a couple was driving from New York to Florida, and they were stopped by police because of a cracked windshield. During questioning, the officer decided that the $32,000 cash in the van was probably involved in a criminal drug-related uh, activity. They seized it, and the money was never gotten. The money was, it was instead shared with federal authorities under the Equitable Sharing Program. What do you think? Hey, thirty-two. Th- why would you be carrying thirty-two thousand uh, dollars? Because you went like grocery shopping. Reasons. I mean, you buy thirty-two thousand dollars worth of groceries. You I'm don't. Saying, it's not that much money. It is not. It that really much, isn't. Yeah. It really isn't. Look, guys, let me just throw some advice out here to you. Please don't carry thirty-two thousand dollars in cash with you. I'm sorry, thirty-two thousand dollars. Thirty-two thousand dollars. I was thinking thirty-two hundred. That's a little bit more money. But still, but still, it, yeah. Do you do you have the right to make stupid decisions? Yeah. I okay. Let me tell you this. No, you don't. Really. <laughs> I spent more than thirty-two thousand dollars in my transition between jobs. Is yeah. that just? I mean, so it it is a bit of money. Yeah. But, yeah, but it's not. But, it's not life changing. But, but, you but know. John, John, would you carry thirty-two thousand dollars in cash with you? Driving across state? Not anymore. I mean, there was a time. Really? Yeah. There was never a time when I would have carried that much cash with me. Yeah. Ever, 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 ever. Uh, th- there's too many better ways to do it. That having been said, carrying that much cash does not make you a criminal. It makes you no. stupid. Well, yeah. see, and, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I would have carried that much cash. Uh, and, and there was a really awkward period. I think, I think we're kind of coming out of that period. So there was a time when you were younger when they would use cashier's checks, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's almost a dead thing. Like, nobody uses those anymore. Um, you can put it in the bank, but if you need to pull it out for use for something, a lot of banks will not let you spend that much at once. It is not possible. Yeah. yeah. Even if you have $320,000 yeah. in the bank. If you're, going to, if you're going to Vegas, maybe. Yeah. So I could see a legitimate use for having that money going to your bank yeah, and yeah. saying, especially if you have like Austin Bank and you're going to Kentucky, yeah, Someplace you have a have regional yeah. bank and you're going out of state, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see a legitimate thing there. Thirty-two thousand is a bit more money. I will yeah, say that yeah. wedding and you've yeah. got a bunch of different vendors to pay and yeah. your bank isn't going to let you swipe that much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. It's just, but, but but again, it's just it's disturbing what happens here. Yeah, March of 2012. This is just just yesterday, basically, right? <laughs> Yeah, That's and not the 90s was only 10 years ago. That's not that long ago. Uh, March 2012, in the middle of the night, without a warrant, New York City police uh, burst into the home of Gerald Bryan, ransacked his belonging, ripped out his light fixtures, arrested him, and seized $4,800 worth of cash. But after a year, the case was uh, was released against him, was dropped completely. He has yet to receive his money back. Never charged with anything. They destroyed his house, ripped out his light fixtures, and took $4,800 in cash. But they didn't find any. Of course they didn't. Yeah, yeah. It really is amazing to me the things that they justify in the looking for drugs. Yeah, yeah. Like, fucking Kansas. You know, in uh, in 1992 or three, 
I was driving from, uh, I was stationed in North Carolina, and I'd, I'd come home to Texas. I was heading back, and I got pulled over on Interstate 20 in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, I didn't have any money, so they couldn't take anything. But, yeah, that's the uh, thing. I've been broke yeah, most of my life, so but, honestly. But, but, you know, I was uh, I was 21 years old, mm-hmm. and they pulled me over. Uh, I was driving a 75 Cutlass, and they took everything that I owned out of my car and spread it out in the grassy median between the highways looking for drugs. Was yours wet? Mine was wet when they did that. Yeah, and, the and, grass was wet. And I'm looking at this going, I didn't I did nothing wrong. Yeah. I wasn't speeding. I wasn't anything. I, had I did. A, I ran a stoplight. I had a Texas license plate in Shreveport, Louisiana, mm-hmm. and they pulled me over. And that and they told me that day. That's why we pulled you over. Because this is a drug corridor. They say that for every highway though. Yeah. That's like their excuse for everything. This is a drug highway. All the drugs come through this highway. Well, it's a road. Yeah. Okay. A, I'm surprised they don't it's say It's a highway. This is a drug street. It, they they it's, built those It's residential, but it's a drug those, street. They built those because they're 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 they they're through the mo- the major traffic areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So, I've kind of covered what I wanted to cover. I just wanted to throw some some specific examples out for our audience. I think um, civil asset forfeiture. What well, let's do that do our round table. Is is there a purpose for civil asset forfeiture? Yes, to line the pockets of police departments. Is there a legitimate purpose for civil asset <laughs> forfeiture? No. What, you don't think no. that's legitimate? No. No. No, no. I agree. So, uh, hey. Here, here. We are unanimous about something. It's not the beer. So, um, Hell no, it's not. <laughs> Lunatic. This was fun. It was. I, I enjoyed redoing this. We, we probably ought to revisit some other. That is there the are... highest rating you've ever given a beer. Probably. Yeah. So the, and I stand uh, by it. I think it's the best beer I've had on the show. There, there's actually ever. some some other shows we did in that first season. They've been pulled off the air. Unless you're on our Patreon, you can't get them. Um, and I think it's time to revisit them. I'm thinking of militarization of police. I, there were some good shows. Barter. Uh, I don't think we it, should ever do that show again. Yeah, we, we, I'm we, probably going to take the day off on that one. Yeah. We should never just do let barter you guys duke again. it out. Uh, but yeah, I want to go through some of our old catalogs, and I, I, I don't want to just redo everything from day one. He likes this more than Lizard of Cause. Yeah. I do, actually. I do, actually. I'm so confused. I do, actually, yeah. But, but yeah, I want to do a few of these. I want to do a few yeah, of these. I think so. Yeah, it'll be fun. So, uh, so this was a lot of fun, and uh, at the end of the show, we're going to be firing Anna because she can no longer rate beers. So um, before my brain literally melts out of my ears and... Utter and complete confusion at Mike's rating. It melted out of your ears before you rated that beer. (laughs) Shut the fuck up, Mike. Anyway. Anna is now shaking, Mike. (laughs) And it's turning me on. (laughs) Anyway, um, if you enjoyed the show, you can uh, get some of our super cool swag at uh, teespring.com. We have new swag. Teespring.com slash stores slash six pack philosophy. We do have a couple of new shirts, actually. Um, I thought one of them was not put up. I have since observed that it is. It's back up. Yeah, it is. We put it up. It got pulled. It got back up. So something something worked. Good. It's better now is is the point. Uh, Have a couple of new shirts. Have our standard swag as well. Uh, This this wall art and a coffee cup. Not that wall art, though. Not this. This is mine, and you can't have it. You can buy it for enough money. But I am going to break it. No. there, okay, there is a, there there is is a enough number. Money. There, there is, is a number. number. There is a number. Uh, but anyway. Throw a number at it. We'll sell mouth. it to you. So uh, we have swag on Teespring. Um, you can hit us up on social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy. You can sleep with Anna if you give enough money. Uh, speaking of, we have a Patreon. Um, for enough money, I will totally take a nap with you, and it will be the best nap you've ever had. Um, I have the best naps. Everybody says so. Uh, <laughs> other than that, she, she thank you guys. She sleeps with lots of people is what she's saying. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun, kind of, and we hope you have too. Cheers. 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 Ding. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 